Hey guys and welcome back. So I just wanted to go over with it being the final week. I.e. this week we should be getting the new version update. If not this week, it'll be next week, but he said two weeks and this should be it. So I'd be looking for that around Thursday or Friday. Because he posted that on the 4th of April. Alright, so what's going on with version 9? There's going to be a bunch of changes. So you might want to start a fresh playthrough if you want to see how it works out. If not, you can play on your current game. You should not need to start fresh. That's one of the biggest questions a lot of people in Discord keep asking. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and cover what all he's going to add and change. So we're going to skip the, the initial here where it just says the version 9 update changes and bug fixes. So <clears throat> going on down, van beads and animals change the van bee movement on slanted terrain. In the current game, version 8, van bees can walk slash run over steep cliffs and landscapes. For 9, he's reduced the degree of slope they're able to walk slash run on. They will no longer be able to step on large boulders slash cliff sides in most cases. Players will be able to create elevated bases that Vambies, for the most part, can no longer reach. So where Vambies right now are currently just running up the cliffs, they should stop doing that. Players can step up or walk up terrain slash cliffs of 45 degrees. Vambies can step up or walk up terrain slash cliffs of 55 degrees. Previously, it was 95 degrees, so that's why they were coming straight up the cliff faces. <laughs> so that should help us a lot if you want to build a cliffside base for more protection and keep them off of one side or... You know, building one of the box canyons. All right, change AI will no longer enter water. Applies to both humanoid and animals. So where the animals and stuff are just walking under the water, they should not do that anymore. With this change, water bases will not be directly impacted by enemy AI. Instead, they will wait at the shore for the player. So if you built a base like in the middle of a pond or a river or the ocean, they uh, they should just stand there and stare at you. Uh, changed crocodile health increases from 200 to 300. Damage inflicted on the player from 25 to 50 per hit. So watch out for the crocodiles. They're going to be doing a lot more damage. Uh, you start off with 100 hit points. You probably won't have over 100 when you first fight them. So two hits from a crocodile will kill you. <laughs> so you want to keep your distance. Uh, changing the bear health increase from 200 to 300. Damage inflicted on the player from a bear is going to go from 25 to 35 per hit. Change aggro and alarm range of animals reduced by 50% when crouched. So we can actually sneak now by pressing the C button. Furthermore, non-aggressive animal will retreat from further away if not crouched. This does not apply to birds, so the birds are still going to be running around like crazy. Added, some Vambies are now equipped with a knife and can throw it as a projectile. They're only equipped with one knife, so one projectile per Vambi. So here's the animation of that. So they're going to be throwing crap at us now. <laughs> So look out, guys. I added a new Vambi behavior. They now have the capability to dodge melee attacks. Added large scorpions. Scorpions are added in the caves. They do very little damage, but can make you bleed or get infected. And here's a photo of the scorpions, if anybody's interested in looking at that. Just your typical scorpion. They look good, like all the graphics in this game. Building and construction. He's added a few more building section options. So this is something that's really cool, uh, some of the stuff he's added. Uh, it's going to be the slanted half walls, log half walls, cement half walls, glass half walls, a new wooden inner roof corner. So if you want to see the half walls, he's built a like a loading ramp right here. So you can see he used interior slanted wall here, an interior half wall, a uh, log half wall, and a cement half wall. Below that, we then just have the basic half walls laid out with one slanted wall. So you can make your you can dress your stairs up, make everything look a lot nicer now. Fill in all those empty gaps, hide all these uh, openings you have on your foundations. And here's the glass half wall compared to the full. And then this is one that uh, I saw several people request in Discord was to get the in, like the interior slanted corners. And then here's the roof actually built out with it. So now our roof lines and stuff are going to start looking even better. And there's even more changes to come after this to the roofs that are going to be part of nine. As we go down, we'll see those. Uh, you can now rotate walls and doors with the mouse wheel. You can now add doors to interior door frames. I know a lot of people were complaining that they wanted to have doors inside so they could build real houses. Change, he's removed the roof dividers on most roof sections because he prefers the look without them. I agree. I, don't, I didn't like the way they, they hung down so deeply. So here he's got a picture showing the two. Added because of the change in roof dividers, he's created a roof slash cap divider to replace what was removed from players who preferred the old way. It is also needed for slanted roof sections. So here's what it's going to look like now, guys. So you can see where it's, it doesn't take up as much space. It's not as ugly. So when you hang lights and stuff, 
It should help with the lighting and the shading, and it should look a lot neater. Well, that was the before. Here's the after. My bad. So where some of it looks new, right here, all of it is the new look. So it's all going to be a lot lower. Lights are going to look better. They're going to give off better lighting because there won't be as much stuff around them instead of us having to build them out and then put in flat panels. Here's the new slow, uh, like corner pieces or slants where you can fill in. No more gaps and no more having to build like I do and show my videos where you have to kind of play around until you get your corners right or you have to double up. Uh, villages and text. So this is the big part a lot of people are going to like and then some people might dislike. But uh, villages and text. Added two new tech blueprints, circular saw bench blueprint and the water house blueprint. For any save files created before the update, you'll need to respawn all the tech blueprints again so that a restart is not required. Players will have to visit all the villages again to find the two new ones. Any techs you already have will still show as being learned, but in your travels to find the new ones, you also find the old ones. So pretty much when you go back to each village, you're going to find two blueprints per village. And you'll find the old ones as you dig through to find the new ones. But if you have water houses built already or saw, circular saw benches made already, they'll still be there. You just won't be able to build any more. These added three more villages on the map. So now a total of six with a total of 12 blueprints or tech prints, books, whatever you want to call them, to be found, two per village. So here's a picture of the new map. Let me uh, let me minimize this a little. Oops. Is that a little bit? There we go. So you can see the cave. He's going to change the way the caves look on the map so they're easier to see. Uh, you can see the villages. They look the same. And uh, he's just filling in more of the space with them. So they still got to travel around. All right, so let's keep on moving. So changed loot and towns will now respawn every 10 in game days. I know a lot of people like that. That's going to be a good way to start. Pretty much you're going to want to go hit a village pretty quickly. Uh, whatever loot was there will despawn and all new all new loot will respawn. If the 10th day comes, loot will not respawn during runtime or a lag would occur. So what's going to happen is every time you reboot the game, reload into your game, that's when it will respawn. So if you play for 20 in-game days, it's not going to respawn until after you reload the game. Same way the trees are currently working. Game options, added new game setting, can now toggle head bobble on and off. Some people say they're getting motion sick from that. Add a new game setting. You can now modify player stats depletion rate. You now have the option between slow, normal, or fast depletion. Slow equals two times slower than normal. Fast equals 1.5 times faster than normal. And then normal is where we're currently sitting at. So that's just going to be your food and stuff like that. Your water, thirst, hunger, vitamins, all that. Added FOV slider to the game. Video options. However, there is a narrow range from 85 to 100 degrees. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, FOV is field of view. So it's pretty much how wide or narrow your view is on the screen. Added Celsius to Fahrenheit toggle option. So anyway, from different countries, there we go. We can each now toggle it to where we actually understand the temperature. Um, added advanced AI customization. Players can now disable slash enable specific animal types. You can also adjust their hit point, damage dealt per hit, and how much meat is dropped when harvested. There are a couple of settings also for Vambies. You can customize their hit point and damage dealt. These settings can be adjusted for both new games and loaded games. Default values are mentioned via a tooltip when hovering over each setting option. So if we look here, it's just like I go over on my day zero and day one videos. You can, like you just hover over these, it'll tell you what, what you can change, what it's gonna affect. And then you can just change up all kinds of different settings now. So it's just all the same drop down menus. Every time you save your game and come out, if you wanna change one of these, you can just load it back without it enabled. Say like you don't want Vambies, you can disable them. Then you want Vambies later on, you just save your game, log out. Uh, when you go to load in, re-enable it with the drop menu, and then they'll be back in the game. And these are your other settings, of course. And even more settings where you can change all the, pretty much you just added, like, it looks like a dev tab. <laughs> and that's where you can change all of these if you want to get really, really specific. All right, so other changes and additions. Added a steel spear, can be crafted on the advanced workbench. Slightly more damage dealt, but a huge increase in durability. Pretty much it just lasts longer with a little bit extra damage, which is good because we, you know, we all fish with spears and make tons of them. Added steel spear tip using the crafting recipe of the steel spear. So here's a photo of that if y'all want to see it. Pretty much looks like a regular spear, just the tip changes a little bit. And this is one of my favorite things he's added. Uh, players have for a while now been asking for a way to label their storage chest. Well, this is now possible. 
When interacting with the chest, a text box will be visible for players to type in a description. So here's a photo of that. It's pretty much we can label all of our chests now. No more running around looking. Even on the food, even on the log card, it, you can have it labeled. All right, so change another popular demand. This is one of my biggest favorites too. We can now stack the ingot shelves. So they they stack flush. No more having to build tables and stack stuff until we get it, you know, almost perfect. All right, change bone shards crafting station. Change from the advanced workbench to the regular workbench. This means you can get bone spears much quicker. Bone arrow crafting station. Change from the regular workbench to the advanced workbench. And then add, he's adding oxygen levels. So when we go into water now, there's going to be oxygen in the top left. If oxygen level hits zero, the player will slowly start to lose health. So the game's slowly but surely getting polished and turning into a true survival game. Added a new splint item to heal broken bones. Easy to craft two sticks and five plant fiber. Added fall damage and broken bones. Y'all know I like to jump off high stuff. Most of us do. Um, we don't want to do that anymore. Players will now experience fall damage and a chance at breaking a leg. The split will heal that wound when a bone is broken. Players will walk slowly just like if they're encumbered or overweight. So there's a photo of the splint. And then here's the new icon. It's just it's a broken bone in, server, uh, in a red circle. Splint takes up a little bit of space it looks like right here. All right, so moving right below that. This is a cool change too. Like we can make some really cool bases with this now. So more freedom with spike traps. You can place these pretty much anywhere now. So right here in this photo, he's got them just attached to the side of a stone wall or a cliff face. I can't wait to do that. That's going to that's gonna look so cool. I'm going to have to build some new bases for that. Let me see. What else do we have? Change the log cart can now travel on large boulders, boulders and cliffs. So it shouldn't drop off anymore is what I'm assuming that means. Or get stuck. And then here's the biggest change since the latest log cart upgrade where we can put chests on it. So when storage chests are on the cart, the player will pull the cart rather than push it because of visibility. Was an issue when chests were added to the cart? If there are logs or stone crates, the cart will be like before this update pushing it. So don't try to take stone crates and chests or logs and chests because then you'll just be pushing it again and won't be able to see. Added two new bulk item recipes. Added by popular demand, players can now alt right mouse button, click wet and dry brick to and from the brick crate. That's definitely a huge request. That'll make uh, a lot of my upgrade videos a lot faster. Wet brick times 10 for bolt crafting and medicated bandages times five in bolt crafting. So that's going to be a lot easier too. I know that's been highly requested by a lot of guys that follow my channel and in discord. Um, alt right mouse button is shown here to move your stuff in and out of the drying rack for the bricks another change is moved all seed items in the itempedia from the other category to the food category move the wooden shelter in the itempedia from the placeable category to the construction category bug fixes grabbing the log cart while standing on it would sometimes catapult the player in the air walls would not align properly when building levels with foundations railing collision fix arrows could not be fired through the poles Shooting arrows would sometimes not work if close to an AI and an arrow was stuck in the AI. So pretty much what was going on with that was, like you've seen in my videos, if you're shooting crocodiles or bears and they're right on top of you, when you went to right click, it, would, it was trying to give you the option to destroy it. So you couldn't fire an arrow, so he's fixed that now. AI would cause lag in villages if players would go in a house and close all doors. AI could walk through village doors in some circumstances. So those are the bug fixes, guys, and that's what we're looking at in version 9.0, which should be out this week. Uh, it's a lot of changes that a lot of people want to see. I think I'm just going to start a fresh game again because I want to get all the, all the blueprints from the six different villages and map them out. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty excited about this. I know it's a ton of things that have been requested. I th if I remember right, when I asked the last time, he, I think he's talking about adding a storyline around between, like, 11 to 14 version. So we should start, see you know, we should start seeing a lot more stuff get polished and finished up. And hopefully some... Uh, campaign story mode type stuff getting added in here really soon which i'm sure he's gonna have to add in a few other things for us to start doing that but we're getting there we're getting closer he's starting to mention it now so that's a good sign i know a lot of people are requesting that uh to answer other people's questions multiplayer is still not on the roadmap um, as you know when you look at the character and you see our shadow there's no player model yet that's why the field of view slider only goes out so far because there's nothing to see like there's no character 
design model yet. I'm sure eventually, just like Green Hell did, it'll come down the road. But for right now, like I said, multiplayer co-op is not on his radar. He knows everybody wants it. A lot of people are requesting it. But uh, it's just going to be a long ways away. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, maybe you know something I don't, be sure to drop that below. And as always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching, guys.